Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and today we're gonna put a proper water tank on this water heater. I had a comment that reminded me that it's not a hot water heater, it's a water heater. Common mistake, I make it all the time. I won't be taking a shower in this yet, just because it's in the 50s here in Georgia. We had a cold snap last night and it dropped 20 degrees and starting to feel like it should here in November. I've got all my supplies for the tank in the garage, so we're gonna head over there where it's warmer. One essential element of my tank is that I'm switching the hose from this garden hose to this braided vinyl. And the main thing here is that the inner diameter, the ID, is an actual 3 8 which fits the barb fitting that I've got. The main body of the tank is going to be built using two sections of 4 inch PVC pipe. And I'm going to connect them with a T that reduces to 2 inch. I'm actually going to see if I can get away with dry fitting these mainly because uh, I may want to expand the size of this tank um, based on the amount of water that I'm going to need for a shower. So for now, just the two two-foot sections uh, will, will have to suffice just for the test. I'm going to put a cap on one end of this. Also just the dry fit. I'm going to use a coupling and a two inch reducing bushing on the other end. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue these. All right, stood that up to get some good pressure on it and a little bit of twist to help kind of melt the joint together. Here's the assembly for the shower head and valve connecting to the tank. It's also going to include the outlet where the cold water is going to come out of the tank and go to the rocket stove to be warmed. All right, and let's assemble it. I don't want this coming out of the side. So the angle here is important. Bushing fit here, threaded fit here. So we this shower on and off valve. Three quarter inch bushing to a half inch thread. This is probably longer than I need. Wasn't sure exactly how much this assembly was gonna stick out. So I'll probably return this and get something that's much shorter. But for demonstration purposes, we're gonna go ahead and complete it like this. I'm gonna use some Teflon tape on this thread just for water tightness. Half inch thread elbow to half inch thread. Put that facing down. And then finally, the shower head. I'm gonna go ahead and Teflon tape this as well. I missed my angle on this just a little bit, but um, it'll be okay since the water will still be able to flow out of that gravity wise. I'm happy with this. Now 
this is just my intuitive approach to this assembly. There may be a more efficient way to put this together, including tapping, um, but not everybody has taps. So I like using the fittings that I can buy directly from Home Depot or a home improvement store because I know that you can get those as well. One last connector here. And now this is ready to connect to our tank. So in retrospect, um, seeing how large this is sticking out, um, I'll probably be able to go right into the valve here with the shower head, maybe something as short as two inches to connect the bushing here, the fretted bushing with the, the shower head down here. This is gonna feel like it's a bit long out over the shower area. All right, now I'm gonna connect the shower head extension assembly to the tank. And the reason I've got the 45 here is that I really wanted this T to be able to be tilted down so that the water could really drain out of the bottom of the tank, not the middle. If it were straight out like this, then I would lose the, you know, a couple inches of water in that tank. So th thus the 45 degree angle on that. So our tank is actually going to sit like this. This feels a bit like an albatross. And it's hard to see just how big it's going to be when you're sitting the parts next to each other in the store. I think from a functional standpoint, you see where I'm going with this. Again, this is an example where you're seeing my prototype instead of a refined design. And that's part of the goal of this channel. But I do value the contribution that um, you all provide with ideas and efficiencies and um, options um, and suggestions in the comments. So please do that. How could I have made this a little more simple? For now, this is going to stay open. I'll fill the tank this way. It'll allow me to put it in a thermometer in here to check the temperature as the hot water is coming in uh, the inlet side here. Eventually I might use this as a way to add a pressure line, hook up a hose to, uh, to add some pressure to this tank. We'll see if it needs it. I, I kind of want to see what it's going to do gravity feed wise and then from there we'll check out adding uh, water pressure via the garden hose. Alright, so the tank is assembled. Now it's time to go out to the water heater and um, hook it up. I grabbed a couple of um, hooks for the four inch PVC as a method for hanging this outside. We need some kind of a brace right here. Yep, time to get the lights out. Not exactly my height, but I can adjust this. There's enough tension here on this to turn the valve. It's a little tight. We'll leave that off. All right, back on the stove side here, and now I'm gonna hook up the water lines. So I hope I have enough hose. It's the lower end, the cold side. definitely a much more snug fit than that garden hose. And now the hot side. Hose is pretty tight here. I can always adjust the location of the tank, but for the purpose of the test this will work. I may have to put a heat shield element back here to keep that hose away from the fire. All right, now we'll connect the hoses to the tank. The hot side. I barely had enough hose for this. It 
So here's a modification that I'm gonna recommend here, which is not have this whole long thing out here. Instead, do another T on this out the back and bring the water line in that way. I'm gonna make sure that it works and then I'll refine it. All right, but all the lines are hooked up now, so I'm gonna fill this with water and we'll start the rocket stoke. All right, the line is full. That's how the air bubbles come up. Now we'll fill the rest of the tank. Hopefully these supports will hold this much water. Probably pretty heavy. All right, let's light it up. So there's a decent amount of flame coming out the top of the stove and one thing that I heard in, in the comments was that the stove doesn't uh, make the best use of the amount of heat we're generating. And I, I agree with that completely. Ideally, the, the coil on this would be you know, two and a half to three times as long. And you know, I can also put some pot stands on the top of this and while I'm heating the water, I can be boiling water, uh, making making foods. There's definitely ways to be more efficient with the amount of energy that's being created by this little rocket stove water heater. You can feel the hose starting to warm up. Make sure my fire doesn't go down though. Got a nice rocket going. Stocked it up. The thermal siphon is definitely working. Let's get a look from the top. So we're running at about 67 degrees, which I think is probably up from the ambient. I should have measured the ambient temperature first can see some flow in the water there. I don't know if you can see that. All right, I didn't really quantify the amount of wood I started out with, but uh, this is basically the second um, load of fuel into the stove. I'm gonna do one more, um, which you see here beside the stove, and then we'll see what our water temperature is looking like. I had another really good comment that suggested that I should have, instead of using the perlite mixture of cob around the coil, that I should have used regular cob. Um, and his comment stated that it would have been better for the thermal mass around the coil to actually retain some heat to radiate that back into the coil. And I totally see the logic in that. I, I hadn't thought about that angle. So appreciate that comment. Thanks for the feedback. Of course, I can't do anything about it right now on this stove. But maybe the next one. These sticks are a little bit wet. 
been out in the rain, which hasn't rained in a couple days, but they're still a little damp. They'll, that water will boil off, and then we'll get going again here. Cut off some sap too. Some of this stuff is pretty recently dropped from the tree, not fully dead yet. All right, I'm gonna go check the temperature up top. All right, so we're at 99 degrees. That's shower temperatures right there. Well, more like 125, but this will probably work for a warmer shower. Question is how well are, is the water mixed? That I don't know. Before I try the shower out, I'm going to uh, let this burn down the rest of the way because I don't want this thing burning while the shower is running because I'm not sure the water level is going to go down, we'll lose the siphon and I don't want the copper coil to end up being empty. I probably could have run the rocket stove for twice as long. It was about 20 minutes of burn. If I ran it a little bit longer um, or I had more coil then it would have heated up a lot more quickly. All right, let's give it a test. The first little bit of water should be cold because it probably still hasn't uh, mixed with the warm yet. See the steam coming off that? It's moderately warm. Definitely would probably benefit from having some pressure. All right, now, I could do with the low pressure shower like this, it'd be fine. But that's pleasantly warm. Not bad. Some question marks here still. Uh, capacity, how long will this shower last? This thing's been running for about four minutes now. Still seems to have about that same amount of pressure, which isn't bad. I think if you were rinsing off or even washing your hair, you could pull it off. Unless I'm just cooling down uh, during the summer. In that case, you know, uh, just a little bit of warm water takes the edge off from that uh, 55 degree water coming out of the hose. Especially if I pressurize it, I think that would be a great uh, added benefit to this. But we heated up some water with a rocket stove. And uh, that was the purpose of this project. So in that sense, I have been successful <laughs> to a degree. I'm sure there's ways to improve this, and I look forward to uh, hearing from you in the comments below. As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green. And save a little green by doing it yourself. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please like and share and subscribe for a new Green Shorts DIY video almost every Friday. <laughs>